Does Goldman Sachs even know what they're talking about? Hi, my name is Lindsay Fricks, and I am the team lead of the Lindsay Fricks Group at North & Co., and this is your March Phoenix Metro Market Update. We're starting to see a lot of the news outlets start to backtrack on some of their doom and gloom predictions. They're now starting to say, ooh, maybe we reached the bottom, maybe things are looking up. In fact, some of them are actually predicting some growth. So what is to believe? What do we make of all of this? Well, the reality is, is that the volume within the real estate industry is down, meaning the number of transactions is down. And so when that happens, everyone thinks, oh, the sky is falling and prices are going to go down. But in reality, it's a simple supply and demand equation. And even though we're doing less transaction, demand is still exceeding supply within the Phoenix metropolitan market. So what we're seeing is because of that, prices are actually stabilizing at flat to slightly trending up. Now, pricing is the last indicator but what we can see is that less listings have come on the market year to date as in previous years so we've had a softer seasonality launch to our year than we've had in any other year aside from three other years so we are super soft on listings right now and even though demand is also low it's more than supply and so in that environment prices are going to at least stabilize if not to go up and now what about foreclosures? A lot of people are like, oh, well, after COVID and after the uh, foreclosure moratorium, well, we're actually seeing historic low levels of foreclosures. In fact, in January, there were only 40 homes that actually got to foreclosure, which is minuscule for a metropolitan the size of Phoenix. Now, the real problem that we're facing here is actually interest rates, and they have been so volatile. And now we're, we're really coming to grips with the fact that we're probably never going to see sub 4% interest rates again. I think we all can agree that's really unlikely to happen. But what happened was we had a good inflation report followed by a bad inflation report. And that bad inflation report is going to cause the Fed to keep jacking up the federal funds rate. And it's going to keep things just really volatile over in the mortgage-backed security side of things. So what you need to know is that people are really getting used to these rates and buyers are still getting back out into the market and shopping. So if you have a home to sell and you think, gosh, nobody can afford this house, you'd be surprised. People are willing to stretch themselves to get into a home right now because they know they can and competition's less and home prices aren't going up as fast and know that they can refinance in the future. Honestly, when the dust settles and everything said is done, I think the best we could probably expect from mortgage rates is the mid five. So right now, as we look today, we're kind of hovering around that 7% plus rate. That sounds really scary to a lot of people, but there's still a lot of over 50% of sellers are offering seller concessions, which means you can use those funds in order to buy down your rate, either on a temporary or a permanent basis, and then refinance later. Now there's no guarantees rates are going to drop at any time, but my prediction is that once we get inflation under control, we're going to see a, a reduction in mortgage interest rates and that we'll probably uh, stabilize out around five and a half to six percent. We're also seeing that the number of price reductions that sellers are having to do in order to get their home sold has come down dramatically. In fact, we're well below normal on the number of price reductions um, that we've seen over time. We're also seeing the days to accepted contracts start to work its way back down, meaning that homes are not sitting on the market as long. So if you were one of those sellers kind of like, uh, I'm not sure what to do or on the fence, it may be a good time for you to sell. But honestly, all of these trends differ depending upon what neighborhood you live in and the condition of your house. If you have a great house that's ready to move into, it's really good time to sell. If you have a house that needs work, pricing is going to be super critical because people are still being quite fussy around pricing. And I would say that you are going to have to prepare yourself that people are probably going to ask for seller concessions and be a little bit more aggressive on repair requests. Now that's not saying that everyone was, we had a great listing that went under contract, had five offers over asking, um, no repairs were asked of the seller and no seller concessions were given in that. So it is still possible. It just really is dependent upon the house and the neighborhood. So we would need to get together and really determine what it looks like for you before I can tell you if it's a great time for you to sell or not. On the buyer side, one of the things that I think is really important is that you realize is that rent continues to go up. We've flattened out a little year over year, but the general trend for rent over time is that it's going to go up and it can go up without a ton of notice. And the beauty of having a mortgage is that it's a stable payment. You know what it's going to be for 30 years unless you refinance. 
and there's a lot of security in knowing how to plan for your living expenses. It is my honor and privilege to be your guide in the Phoenix metropolitan market, and I absolutely love answering your questions and helping you determine the best course of action for you. There are no two clients that are the same, and so I really love getting to know each client's unique situation, perspective, goals, so I can help them develop the best plan in order for them to grow their financial wealth through real estate. If you have any questions, want to set up time, the link is below. Have a great month, y'all.